Hey everybody, it's James Nell here. Everybody's the least favorite redneck. Sitting outside today uh, trying to get started working on this red truck. It has been two and a half weeks since we got back from the beach and I'm just now getting to start working on this thing. <sighs> Everything in the world has come up to, to postpone me. It has rained. I have done work for the neighbor lady down the, down the hill and done work for her which that really, really needed to be done, so I'm not disappointed that I did that for her because it looks better. Um, I pulled the logs out of Rex's yard so that I don't feel bad about them laying over there while I'm over here doing work on the red truck. I mowed the yard twice, broke the lawnmower, I broke the chainsaw, and I broke Frankenbach. And in trying to put Frankenbach back together, I broke the chain tool, putting the uh, chain, or trying to take the chain apart. So anyway, I'll probably try to show you a little bit of that here and there. Um, and then we're going to get into what I'm doing with the red truck. Today is notch day because I'm not trying to take the red truck apart. Because if, if I need to drive it, um, then I need to, uh, to just be able to just drive it. And once ever I... I, 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 I That's why it takes me 47 tries to make a intro video. Alright, so yesterday, the Palagoo and electrical tape backing on the... Uh, on the on the bar didn't work it leaked took the goop off tried thicker electrical tape didn't work uh it leaked so then i tried just rubber gasket uh made it flat to go on that plate back there and that didn't work it leaked so then last night as a last ditch attempt i took it all back apart one more time for like the 15th time and i put the orange goo the plate, more orange goo, the rubber gasket, and then let it all sit, kind of halfway compressed, and then once it hardened up, I finished fully compressing it. What you got for me? Out here running around before I nap. Alright, so, I ran it for a second, maybe you didn't like it, but it works, I think. At least for now. So, we'll give this a shot. We're going to go play with the baby for a few minutes. What are you doing, monster? <laughs> We're going to go ride the bike for a few minutes, the little bike. And then, when she takes a nap, I'm probably going to get after trying to put a new front sprocket on the big bike. Wish me luck. So, played with the saw, that seems to work for now. Took this thing off. I think there's a problem right there. Okay. You over there working on something? <laughs> okay. So anyway. Okay, so we have got to put back together. I opted to only put one chain ring on. Because we're in a hurry. And I didn't want to spend the time to space it. Say it. Uh huh. You want to talk until I cut this thing on. Alright, yeah. I got two of them cut. The baby woke up from her nap. Um, uh, smoothed up a little bit. But like I said, the baby woke up, so I couldn't really do a whole lot. I think these are going to be thick enough. I don't think I'm going to need to double them up. They're an eighth of an inch thick. By the time I do a two inch notch and leave four inches at the top and I put like a box in bottom at the bottom, I don't think I'm going to need to, uh, to bend them or double them up or do anything else stupid. I think it'll be fine. All right, y'all. Let's go get some lunch and uh, let the let the wifey wake up and we'll come back at this later when we have a... Uh, a baby that's not going to scream and cry every time I crank up the grinder. Alright, got one bent up. I don't know if it is even from left to right. Kind of doesn't look like it, but we can make it more right later. One thing to note when you're making uh, bends 
always bend where the non-cut side is on the outside and if you're going to make a bend um, chamfer a little bit like this I mean mine could probably be chamfered a little bit more but chamfer it that way when you bend it the um, the inside pieces kind of meet each other better otherwise it pinches here and will stretch the outside and then you'll break it if you take this and bend it the opposite way and make that the outside and you make that the inside this tends to rip and break and you'll mess your metal up you'll just break your piece I recommend bend into the bend into the uh, uncut side and chamfering it then you can come back with a welder and weld that up and make it strong again let's see if we can make this one match that one when you cut don't cut all the way through Give it a good beer on my head. Give it a good zizz. Get it good and uh, get it good and hot, I guess. Let's see, it, when you get it thin, it'll turn a little color, so you can tell. I went ahead and went all the way through right there. Now what I'm going to use is a sawzall and finish it up. It's been about maybe a minute and a half with the grinder on that. Maybe a minute and a half. And that's a minute and a half with the sawzall. So it's about minutes worth of work including having to stand up and shoot the video you can see where I went most of the way through so I got to the corner and then I just used the sawzall to finish it up easy peasy so now first time I'm setting this in here all right it is close so I'll cut a little bit of that slag off from from it just not fitting right that's close I mean I'll take that little bit of metal right there off and that little bit of metal right there off and it'll fit so baby woke up from her nap I did an up finishing this little bit of grinding I give her her uh, lunch outside in the in the high chair but anyway did these I'm in for about halfway through with them Maybe a little, wee bit more. We'll get them bent up, built it along the bottom, and we'll get it all welded up. And hopefully these notches will be ready to go in the truck. Yeah, yeah. One thing that also happened while the baby was eating her lunch was Uncle Mike might come and got the 7 and 9. So now we have an open parking spot so that we can have more activity room under the garage, under the carport. So that's good. We stretch out a little bit when we're lowering this truck and not have to be so cramped up over here in this corner. Alright. How am I bending the middle? Right here. My anvil. And a BFH. Bam, bam, bam. Can you hear the baby in there laying down? She's in there pitching a fit. She's not crying. She's in there yelling. It's just she's in there trying to put her down back to sleep. She ain't having it. Alright. So, my line is close to the edge. You notice I didn't even try to tighten these down. I'm just basically holding them on. That way, whenever I hit it, they don't jar loose. Because they're going to jar loose if you just try to tighten them down. So I'm just holding them. They're tight enough. That one's all the way right. That's the first one I've been on that side. That one's got a little bit more. Once you get into here with the welding, you can stop, hit this with a hammer, bend it on up, and then finish your weld out. Because by then, this metal is going to be getting hot and it'll bend easier. All right, let's keep going.
to over bend it, lay it on there, and hit that ridge, and you'll knock the, some of the angle back out of it. Oh, that's backwards. All right, both of those are close enough for government work. Let's see what we got. See, that little bit of angle left can be finished up later. Oh, that one. That one's got a lot of gap in it. It was a lot closer. I had it picked up here on the side. It's actually going to, there it is. See, now it fits down on there better. Alright, on the third day, let there be weld. I've got it all cleaned up. I don't know that it's lined up, but I've got it cleaned up. And it's ready to weld. Here are my tools. I got me a chip hammer, a wire brush, a clamp, my helmet, and some gloves. That's it. Oh, yeah, and the welder. A little crappy Miller Cricket. 20% duty, 70 amps. So, I'm going to get in here, I'm going to do all the top stuff first, and then squeeze that gap together with the clamp, and then hopefully I'll be able to show you a final result here in a few minutes. And I am not the best welder in the world, but I can get her done. Now, I tacked the corners, and then I went in for the kill on my first big weld. And this is my first weld I've done in a long time. So, here's what, here, blah, 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 here's what I do. I take it, and as soon as I'm done, I clean it off. So I can see if I made any real bad mistakes. All right, so I have hit the, the duty cycle limit of the welder. It stopped on me about right there on that weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here, chill out for a few minutes, let it catch back up. What you should do is you should reach down there and hit that subscribe button. That way you can see the next video when it comes out and you don't have to wait on uh, seeing it on Facebook or something. It'll just pop up in your notifications. Hey, I've made a new video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. If something happens, you end up not liking me that much. You can always hit the unsubscribe button later, right? I'm sure any salesman would like that sales pitch right there. Oh, you can just throw it away later if you don't like it. And it don't cost anything. Just hit the subscribe button. It'll make me feel better. Alright, let's do some more welding. Got them all, uh, I zizzed them down with the, uh, the flap disc grinder. Uh, hit them with a little bit of brake clean. And now I have them sitting out here in my painting area on top of this old grill. And I'm going to spray paint them. Call them a day. Then we're going to put Frank and Bob back together. And I think me and the baby's going to go for a ride wherever she went to. Hey there! Notches painted. E bolts painted. Bottom plate, shock extenders, and the flip bracket itself. All painted. I'll flip them over in a little while, paint the back sides. Let's go uh, put together Frankenbike. Say hey there. She's ready to ride. All right, we got the new chain on. It is a Zonky. We have got a 24 tooth front, which gives us an 11.44 to 1 gear ratio, which is just a little bit on the faster side than the other one, which means we can't pull a hill as good, but should be able to go on a flat road faster. Still don't think we'll be able to shift with this stupid derailleur. It'll be all right. Here's the, uh, there's the old chain. Here's a piece of the new chain that I just took off. I like this one. This one seems like it's going to be a better chain than that Bible chain. And then here's the new chain tool that I got. It's a Atlan. Got it from Amazon. Real cheap. Did the job real fast. This is the old one. You would have thought this would have been the heavy duty one. Maybe I just didn't use it right, but I broke both of the pins that are on these thingies. Broke both of them. Oh well, let's go ride this thing. You ready, baby?